Have you ever dreamed of living in community? To be living amongst other people who share similar values as you and growing together as a family? Growing your own food together, sharing common spaces together, sharing life moments together. For many people, it's a dream. But for us here in Costa Rica, we've made it a reality. This village isn't your typical neighborhood. It's designed to be a neighborhood of the future, built in a lush valley in Costa Rica. The property is on 170 acres of fertile farmland, including an abundant food forest with thousands of fruit trees, edible community gardens, with natural springs that supply the water. It may feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, but this neighborhood even comes with fiber optic, a big checkmark for digital nomads and online workers. Each neighbor has their own private land and home, and they all share a community center, pool, hot tub, yoga and meditation shala, co-working hub, garden, and sacred spaces tucked throughout the property. Currently, there are over 135 neighbors from 32 different countries, including many local Costa Rican families. This is truly a community of cultures. When we first visited this community years ago, there was nothing. It was just jungle. Now people have actually started to move into their houses. People are living here. And we're going to see some of the places people are living and some in construction and the common spaces that have been built here for the neighbors. When everyone's moved into this community, it could be anywhere between three to 500 people from all over the world coming here with a common goal of building community. What'd you find? I found a little baby pineapple. So cute. This community is designed to be walkable so that you don't really need a vehicle to get around or to visit your neighbors. You can just... <laughs> you can just walk around. Where were you going? I was going that way. Oh, okay. Oh, I wanted to go to the yoga shala. The yoga shala is a beautiful open space of teak wood and thatched roof. It has spectacular views overlooking the community garden and the surrounding mountains. Shoes off. This is a no shoe zone. That breeze, oh, so good. This is another communal space where there'll be things like yoga, ecstatic dance parties. If you don't know what that is, the best dance party there is. Cacao ceremonies, circles, gatherings, pretty much anything. And the view, the view and the breeze. Oh, today is a hot day, but up here it's absolutely perfection. The yoga shala gives an epic view to the garden. You can see the dome and the overall beautiful design of the garden. It's made into a mandala. It's gorgeous. And I can't wait to go down there and show you some of the plants and eat and forage because we brought our bag so we can get some plant, um, we can forage a little bit and bring some food back for dinner tonight. But first let's go to the washroom. Over here is a compost bathroom. It's all open air, so you still get that breeze when you're taking a poop. How epic is this view when you're seated on the toilet? Well, you kind of have to be a, a tall person. Well, yeah. For me, I'm looking at wall, but the breeze, it's the breeze. Another little fun place to just chill, read a book, have a conversation. <sighs> Take a nap. This is so good. I want one of these in our place. That would be awesome. What do you guys think? Should we put something like this in our structure? Which one? <laughs> For the first time, we could actually see houses built from the view of the yoga shala. While many neighbors have designed and built impressive houses, we wanted to highlight one in particular, and it's owned by this man, Doug. The vision of his land started with connecting to the mama mango tree on his property, and the house was built to face this mango tree. This is the mama mango right here off your balcony. You could probably pick a mango. Yeah. This is inside the walls. It's like clay, straw, uh, and water, pretty much. Lime and lime, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to confirm all that. Beautiful. Love the color. It's like a terracotta. I have never seen a house like this before. It is 
pretty spectacular. The vision of Doug's bamboo house is to be as connected to the earth as possible. From the materials used, earth flooring, natural paint pigments, and the open air concept which requires no heating nor air conditioning. It's a one-of-a-kind house for a one-of-a-kind person. shower meant for multiple people, I gotta say. It's pretty big, <laughs> if you want. This is Doug, this is his house. Yeah, awesome. and this is Julia. She's helping to like make the stairs for the, for the maybe Fence. like, uh, what do you call them? Um, Plants. Passion flowers. Oh, the plants over the shower. the shower. Over the shower, so you can eat passion fruit and take a shower at the same time. <laughs> like you can literally, yeah. Amazing, Yeah. <laughs> I love it, I love we it. We have no idea what we're doing. Wow, an internal garden. So this is all going to be garden. Yeah. Yeah. They did like stained glass or something? Yeah, this is like slicing, cool. slicing the bamboo lengthwise to make a railing. It's like bamboo skeletons. Very cool. They haven't finished it yet. Like they're going to be bamboo legs, but this is custom made at the height so I can relax my shoulders and type at the computer at the same time. <laughs> nice. Maybe should have movies showing over here. From the point of view of, of regeneration, this is using lots of natural materials, local materials, renewable materials, materials that don't require a lot of processing or extraction, um, habitat destruction, any of that. And if anything, this is causing, uh, this is creating habitat. I've got some really nice stingless, two stingless beehives that are growing here that, that produce very medicinal and yummy honey. Just grow, growing in the bamboo. I wanted to create it from an artistic point of view and, and I incorporated um, a lot of, a lot of uh, shapes from the golden ratio. The golden ratio is a proportion that's found in, in, in nature and like snails, the shower. It's basically a snail shell. Um, combinations of rectangles that can go in kind of an infinite pattern. It's similar to the Fibonacci series, but it's not the Fibonacci series. The big one also is trying to make it resonate with the land right around here. So I try, really, really tried to keep the trees and try to make this thing work, like resonate with the trees and the trees and all the animals resonate with the house. Mutual resonance together and I as this as the house began to come together I, I re always remember the day when I was just sitting here and starting to feel like yes this is working that goal is going to happen it is happening already when the house was like half built I could feel that resonance Feeling inspired by natural buildings, we thought we'd check out the treehouse being built in the community before heading to the largest bamboo structure in Costa Rica. The treehouse! The treehouse! <laughs> this is like a kid's playground. For it's amazing. A kid's playground? Oh, I'm for sure playing in here. Absolutely. I'm going to take like business calls up in this treehouse. And there's two of them. There's one treehouse over there and one over here. And they're connected by a bridge! That's like ultimate playtime with a kid. That's a childhood dream for like everyone I've ever known. Yeah, who hasn't wanted a treehouse? And this one's actually in the jungle. Like kids all around the world are gonna be jealous of this treehouse. Whoa, so cool. This is amazing. This is so, so cool. This was literally my childhood dream. I remember trying to build my own tree houses and just like random trees that we'd have in the neighborhood. So as you can see, it's not entirely done. So the bridge still needs to be complete to the other tree house, but once it's done, oh my gosh. Yeah. Endless fun, endless, endless. fun. Like For adults and children. I'm gonna be up here. If you can't find me, this is where I am. Up in the trees. Wow.
Next up is exploring an incredible bamboo structure, followed by the pool, hot tub heated by fire, and the community garden. This is The Hive, an enormous hexagon-shaped community center built for entertainment and relaxation. Lucky for us, we bumped into one of the engineers who helped bring this space to life. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Julian Hardy. Uh, I'm a civil engineer and I did the structural design of the common building. Bamboo is like a wonderful material uh, because uh, it grows very fast, uh, it's very strong, um, it's a type of grass and um, it looks beautiful uh, by itself and uh, we can do a lot of things with it uh, that we, if we use other materials it will be much different. What a spectacular place to congregate as a community. I want to show you guys the pool, come on. This is the kids pool and then we have the big pool. This is where a lot of people are going to hang out. It has this incredible view. It feels like a resort when you're here but it's a community. And this place is still in construction. They're going to put cabanas over here, they're going to have like lounge chairs, there's going to be umbrellas, it's going to be like a very cool vibe. Behind me is the community hot tub heated by fire. So there's a fire pit over there with coils that go around that pump the water around the coils, heating them up and then heating up the hot tub. How incredible is that? Oh, this is going to be nice. You can probably fit like 15 people in here. Next on this tour is my favorite part, the community garden. This might be one of the world's most spectacular edible gardens. Right from the tree. Wow. <laughs> Gracias, senor. Gracias. I think over the last few years, a lot of us have realized how important it is to grow your own food or know how to grow your own food. To eat mostly what we grow and know exactly where it comes from. And it's all, it's like beyond organic. It's, Ooh. wow. It's yeah, wild. natural. Is this amaranth? Uh, yep. Amaranth in there. Not the... We're not supposed to eat the flower. It's just the little... <laughs> so much to learn. Those little white balls almost looks like quinoa. Like a smaller quinoa. You can eat it just like this, too. And it's full of protein. Mm. Costa Rica is known for its rich soil and heavy rains, which makes for the perfect combo for healthy vegetation. There's bok choy, there's lettuce, there's a papaya tree, there's like all these cherry trees, there's there's kale, there's um, different spinaches, there's lettuce. This is a spinach, right? Yep, this is a Japanese spinach, I believe. Japanese spinach? Oh, it's crunchy. So good. Everything here just tastes more potent. Alive. More, more alive, yeah. Prana, prana. Soil here in Costa Rica is incredible. <music> Little peppercorn. Smokes that spicy. Whoa! No! Oh. Okay, fine. Oh my god. Oh. 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 There's a hot chili. I just put like a little lick of this chili and it's like filling up my whole mouth. Wow. Oh, why did I do it again? Huh. Well, I can smell that from like five feet away. So good. Fresh mm. dill. Mm. Wow. Want some? Yeah. Amazing. It's so potent. There's a little stevia plant over here. Holy. That's like taking a spoonful of sugar. Yeah. That was a tiny little leaf. Wow. We're not going to give you a full garden tour because that deserves its own video and we're going to go around with our one of our friends who's very knowledgeable of plants and specifically the ones here so 
We'll do that in another video, which I'm really excited to film. Let's go around and eat and know more about all the plants here? Sure, count me in. Now that you've seen this village, I have a question for you. What would your dream village have? Comment below, let us know.